Hi everybody, Chad German here. I'm gonna do a series of videos because I wanna take the time to do this right on article 430. Now 430 is gonna teach us how to size stuff for a motor. This has got a nameplate and then we're gonna find our FLA. Uh, and when we use our FLA, the only time we're ever gonna use that nameplate is really to size these overloads found on this motor control station here. These are the overloads right there, right there, and right there. So you're gonna use the full load amps found on this nameplate. I'm gonna walk you through that real quick and I'm gonna do a series of these videos because overloads are one thing that you need to know on sizing stuff for a motor. You're gonna to have to know about short circuit and ground fault protection. You're gonna to have to know how to size a conductor and I'll do another video. Hopefully I can do these quick um, I've been trying to do these, but every time I come to school, I get hit by students and uh, they, they take precedence over any any video that I take time to make. No offense to you guys, but I got a job there. So let's get to this and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, there's a big difference between FLA and FLC. FLC, to, find, to size my short circuit and my ground fault protection, as well as um, my... Um, my conductors are gonna be found here in these three tables, uh, these four tables. If you've got DC, it's 230.247. Uh, this is single phase, 230.248. This is a uh, two phase, you won't see that much, 230.249. And in three phase, this is a three phase motor, we would go here to size this in uh, 250, or 230.250. Okay, that's enough for that, we'll do another video. But right now, we're gonna size these bad boys, my overloads. My overloads are there to protect this motor from overheating and ruining the windings inside this motor. Now normally, that would be all stuff that we found back at the breaker panel, but here, we're gonna protect this motor a little bit closer, which is gonna be down at this motor controller station, and we're gonna protect this motor probably at a lot less than what we would the conductors and our um, short circuit and ground fault protection, okay? So these overloads are really important, and we're gonna take care of this motor. I gotta look at this, and I'm, I'm gonna go to Section, what section is this in the code book? Section three in 430, and it's gonna teach us how to size a branch circuit overload protection, okay? If you go to part three, you can see that it sends us to 430.32, continuous duty motors, and that's what this guy's gonna be. And then we're gonna go over here, and I'm gonna look at my nameplate. If I have a motor with a uh, service factor marked on the motor at 1.15 or greater, I got 125%. Or if my motor has a marking on the temperature rise of 43, uh, four, sorry, 40 degrees Celsius or less, that's gonna be at uh, 20, 125%. So either one of those show up, that's what you get. All other motors are gonna be at 115%. Now, with that being said, if this ends up being uh, 1.13, obviously I'm gonna to go to the one point, or I'm gonna to go to 115%. If this ends up being 50 degrees Celsius, I'm gonna to go to 115%. So these are the ranges I get to size these overloads. Let's look to see what my service factor or my temperature rise is off the nameplate. To size the motor, or to size the overloads, I use nameplate values only. I don't use the stuff in the back of the tables. So I come here, I've got a three phase motor, I've got 208, 230 and 460 volts. These are my amperages that go associated with those voltages. Again, as amps go, as voltage goes up, amperage goes down. You can see that there. And then you come here, I got a service factor of a 1.15, and I do also have a temperature rating of 40 degrees Celsius. So I know I would take this and times it by 125%. So whatever my amperage is, from my nameplate here, let's say I'm gonna hook 208 to that, I would take that in 6.5 and I would times that or multiply that by 1.25 and that would give me the amperage I would use to size these overloads to protect this motor. So I hope that helped you guys out. We'll get into other videos on how to size the conductors to feed this and how to size the short circuit and ground fault protection, which gets taken over there and in other places in this code book. So I hope that helped and I hope it made a lot of sense.